Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is going smashingly. Shit's getting real now. And I lost my goddamn mind. Joe Short, and I'm here with uh, Mickey or Michael. And help me on your last name again. Melchiondo. Melchiondo, um, also known as Dean Ween. Um, so, a little background you are a rock star, you play guitar, you can shred. You're widely known as Dean Ween, the lead guitar for the band Ween, also known as Mickey Moist of the Moist Boys, and now Dean of the Dean Ween Group. You are a fishing boat captain. You catch big fish and take people with you. I personally had the pleasure of being able to fish with you. That was awesome. You love sports. Uh, what game were you watching before you came here? Uh, I was watching the Philadelphia Eagles uh, lose to the worst team in the NFL. <laughs> I'd rather not talk about that. All right. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um. And you're uh, currently doing a podcast with super fan Joe Short. Uh, at Short's Brewing Company, we've devoted our entire menu to names of Ween songs. We've made a few different beers that have also taken names from uh, Ween. The song Captain Fantasy, uh, the beer uh, Freedom of 78, or Pure Guava IPA. Um, and by the time this podcast airs, you will have played a double header at our pub featuring a Ween esque set list with the backup band called The Brownouts, who are essentially a Ween cover band from Chicago called The Pod. You are in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Uh, you are from New Hope, Pennsylvania, and currently live in Pennsylvania. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Um, and you're a family man. I am. And is uh, today your anniversary, or is that... Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow will be my anniversary. It'll be my 16, 20 years... Oh, God. Uh, 19th anniversary, but I've been with my wife for 25 years. That's awesome. All right, so here's the, uh, the meat potatoes of the interview. Um, Shorts Brewing Company 10-year anniversary party. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to Bel Air. You came out and played for us this past April to help us celebrate 10 years. Um, personally, the best version of, I, of Ween I have ever seen live. Uh, thank you for that. It was a life-changing wow. experience oh, thank you. for me and a lot of people around here. Still to this day, anywhere I go in the state, tap takeovers, whatever, people are like, thank you so much for bringing Ween to Bel Air. <laughs> Changed my life. That's great. So I'm just curious, did you have a favorite part about your experience here in Bel Air? Um, your first time? Well, uh, 
if I remember correctly, I think playing the anniversary for Shorts was the first time I'd played the Ween, uh, Ween songs exclusively in, in probably three years. So um, it was really... It was really cool to get reconnected with those songs. Um, I, I have the Dean Ween group and the Moist Boys. I, I've stayed busy playing music since Ween broke up uh, a few years back, but but uh, you know I hadn't really done anything that was that was all Ween in front of Ween fans, knowing that there was going to be all Ween. So it. Uh, it really kind of exceeded my expectations, and the size of the crowd exceeded my expectations. You had told me it was going to be really pretty big, but uh, it was funny. It was almost like playing for a festival audience, mm -hmm. and I don't think I'd really felt that level of love. I, I get, Ween was a very loving band. Uh, everything we did had love in it, and we got it back every night when we played for crowds. And it's I have the same experience with the Dean Wing group and the Moist Boys, but um, maybe just playing all just Ween songs or something, and it kind of really took me off guard. And and uh, that's when you get the most rewards, I think, is when you're a little nervous and kind of taking chances. And and uh, you know I was never the guy. I, I mean there was two of us out front in Ween. There was me and Aaron, but I'd never really been the guy totally out front on the mic with my name on the poster until that experience. And it gave me a lot of confidence since then and I've kind of continued on with this. So yeah, it was a catalyst for what I'm doing now actually. And, and uh, I mean, if I took anything, I took a lot away from it. It was, it was great. It was just awesome. And, and uh, you know, to be thrown in the, in the deep end of the pool like that also, um, you know, the, the brownouts know all the Ween tunes uh, almost better than we did because they know the album arrangements. Right. So Ween, as we as we did more and more shows, we may have, uh, you know, you take liberties here and there with it and you forget things. That, but they played the arrangements exactly as they were originally written and recorded, yeah, in the studio. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough. Yeah, I gained a lot from the experience. I took away a lot from the experience. It was awesome. It was truly awesome, and it and it uh, was a big help in putting me on the path that I'm so how did pursuing. You, uh, well, that's great. I remember um, afterward uh, when we were sort of heading to the airport, and you're like, "So, what did you think about that?" And for me, I was just like, "Man, I." I still kind of don't believe that it actually happened. Like, it was such an amazing experience. It was, like, surreal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't know, it's a special time in my life. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, it's... Uh, the, the more and more I've toured over the years, the more I've found that there are little pockets. I've played all 50 states in Ween, except South Dakota, funny enough. There's no, there's no gigs in South Dakota, as far as I know. I've never met, I ask everybody. We've played Alaska and Hawaii multiple times, but um, it's amazing to me in the USA that you can still find pockets of music scenes where you didn't know they existed. I mean, for every, for every New Orleans or San Francisco show, there's a show in Scott, Louisiana, or... or Bend, Oregon, or somewhere. Stowe, Vermont, last week I played, and we sold it out. It was like 600 people, uh, you know. Nice. Um, and I, I just love that. That's what I'm in it for, you know, is the traveling and meeting people. But uh, this was a real, I, I think Bel Air, Michigan was a really, <laughs> kind of knocked me off my axis. It was, it was like, I'd never heard of Traverse City, Michigan, let alone knew that there was an international airport there. So to fly in there and then to drive in an additional hour and then sell out a show is profound to me. You know, That's I love awesome. it. I love it. It's great. And I'm, I'm happy for you <laughs> Thanks, man. as well. Um, how did you meet the Brownouts? Because they're a Chicago uh, band called the Pod they, uh, I They were on my radar because they played a very loyal Ween set. Nick, uh, the drummer in the band, owns a club in Chicago. It's very similar to our club in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where I live, John and Peter's, where it holds about a buck twenty-five capacity. And I knew they were playing there, and they're doing special 
shows, and I may have met him, I think, in my travels, and uh, they were having their anniversary, and he invited me out as a surprise to his band, The Pod, which is a Ween cover band, to sit in on the last two songs, and not even the band members were supposed to know. So the first time I did it a couple years ago, I flew in, and I got, I was in Chicago in my room at like seven o'clock, they were going on late, and I was supposed to sit in my room and get a cab in like really secretly and sit in on the last two songs. But as a musician, I realized I was there and I was like, man, screw this. I'm not sitting in my room all night. Like, I would, if there's going to be a gig, I want to go play. I'm all the way in the Midwest, you know. <laughs> so I, I changed my mind and I said, can I just come play the whole show? I wanted to kind of feel them out first. I didn't know <laughs> how good they were going to be. So I went to sound check and I just walked in and, you know, the guys were like, their jaws dropped. They, were, they, they couldn't believe that I was there. I, you know, Nick kept it a real secret, I think from everybody, maybe even his wife. So we ran through a few tunes and I realized that, that, that they were just great. They were going to be great. So I did the whole set. I did, uh, and then I ended up back there not much long after that, and then it's sort of continued from there. I think to, after tonight, I think we will have had seven or eight gigs under our belt. And um, you know, I think a big thing when you're playing music live is trust on stage, to trust the guys behind you that, you know, when you're going for something, they're going to land on the right chord, on the right beat. And, and, um, and uh, these guys actually push me a little bit. So awesome. that's how I met them, and that's how we ended up here. It's, it's funny because we've actually... I never thought it would leave the tonic room in Chicago, but now we're actually on the road doing it, so who knows? I have a, a ticket stub in my bag. Actually, I had to um, pull my office apart in Elk Rapids because that's where I had a collection of I actually have a, a picture of you and I when we first met. Uh-huh. Um, Fishing? Uh, no. this was You, you <laughs> won't remember this, but uh, Lee and I met you before we were even married. Uh, we went to the first Ween shows after um, you went back on tour the last time. It was uh, three in a row. It was like New York, uh, D.C., and New Jersey or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, we were we must have been like right on the same travel path or whatever because we landed at a rest stop. And uh, we were about to leave, and I saw Claude Coleman like walking into the, uh, the restroom. I was like, holy shit, Claude. They're like Ween, <laughs> Ween is here. Like let's circle back, and so we circled back and like uh, parked out in front of your van and sort of love knifed you a little bit, and you uh, were kind enough to take a picture with us. And <laughs> I saved those, so it's kind of funny. It was part of like my my history of Ween, and um, and then I learned you were playing um, with the Pod in Chicago, and so I went and saw one of those shows, and that was after uh, the fishing trip, though. Cool. Um, last thing on the uh, Schwartz uh, anniversary. You uh, wrote a really awesome uh, post on your website called Triumph of the Will, and uh, I just wanted to personally thank you for that because it was an awesome statement um, published by one of my lifelong heroes. Wow. So, thanks. My pleasure. <laughs> well, she danced like a boozy in a hot tub of guava. Peggy Brother said, you know, he's hip to her mantra. He was a man of ten and four girls from Anna Sinatra. Sketch of Van Winkle, like there ain't no tomorrow. I saw Van Winkle, Winkle show up on the scene. I fell from elbows when I saw that he was doing all the sketches of Winkle. Crying through the heavens in a fit of rage. Sketches of Winkle. Little cube is locked up in the cage. Sketches of Winkle. I think I love her, but she don't love me. Sketches of Winkle. Why don't she love me, dude? I don't know. Money drained all the fluid from the sink in the kitchen. Eggie won his veggies, all he's doing is bitching. Mean Ween got me and he said he was kidding. I saw that we go show up on the scene. I fled my elbows when I saw that he was doing all the sketches of Ween Crying through the heavens in a fit of rage. Sketches of Ween 
sketches of Lee Gunner Keeping in the pubis locked up in the cage Sketches of Lee Gunner I think I love her but she don't love me Sketches of Lee Gunner Why don't she love me dude? Rip Van Winkle Rip 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 Van Winkle 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 What's going on ah. with you right now? Like, so what are you up to? Uh, we talked a little bit on the the ride home from the airport, which was a hellish trip to say the least. But <clears throat> we know that you've done some fishing. You mentioned something about a studio. Like you're just touring your ass off. You just came back from an art show. I guess we can just maybe uh, bring us up to speed uh, on that art show. Yeah, my last well, <clears throat> art show aside, I I. Uh, I've been renting buildings since Ween first started. Actually, the the name of our first apartment was The Pod, which we named uh, our second record after, which is it's the apartment where we recorded it on a horse farm. That was probably 1989. So however many years ago that was, 20, I don't know, 25 years ago. Um, is that right? Yeah, I think so. But... but uh, I've made all my records, all the Ween records, Moist Boys, everything I've done has been in a rented building, um, whether it's a, a commercial space or, or a rented house or a, f a lot of farmhouses over the years. I finally found a friend, uh, his father owns like 100 acres, there's multiple buildings on it, so I built my forever studio. It's, it's going to be, actually by the time I get home this weekend, it should, should be finished. Uh, we took a chicken coop and we just tore it down and put a roof and uh, reframed it, put insulation in, carpets, plumbing. Um, so uh, I'm going to make the Dean Ween Group record there. Hopefully we'll be out this spring. That's really what's, that's the biggest thing I have going on right now is I, I you know, I, I've always had six month leases, one year leases. So this place is going to be make music. just to make a specific thing. Uh, okay. You know, the last record I made was the uh, Moist Boys Five, and we did that in an antique shop in our hometown. We set up all our equipment and drums and mics and moved in. Uh, had all my equipment in one place, you know, for the first time in a long time. So every pedal you've ever bought, every guitar, it's right there handy when you want a sound. And you can really get a lot done if you put your mind to it and go every single day. And um, so I finally think I found my forever studio and we've been working on that for since the fall in, in Pennsylvania. So since September. But we passed our inspections this week, electrical, framing, plumbing, all that. So when I go back, we're going to slap up some drywall and put some carpets down and move the equipment in. And make the Dean Ween Group record. That's the main thing I have going on. That and a lot of touring, doing a lot of shows. Um, you know, I'm here right now. It's December 20th, I think. Uh, on the 20, I'm, I'm going home tomorrow on the 21st, and then on the 26th I leave again to play with the Brownouts in Chicago for a few nights uh, till New Year's. And then I'm back on the road with Dean Ween Group and the Moist Boys through the spring. And probably through the summer festival season, and so um, I have a lot going on musically, which is great. Um, You've been like pedal to the metal since anniversary party. Seems like you've yeah, been I've been pedal to the metal. Um, I think when we <clears throat> first broke up, I, it was a real. Uh, it had it was a lot heavier than I ever thought. I think after three years, I still haven't really completely come to terms with it yet. I thought that band would be together forever after 25, six, seven, eight years, 30 years of being together. Actually, I think it's been 30 years wow. now. Um, 
it was 84, so yeah, it, it is 30 years. Just teenagers but, um, when you started that, right? Yeah, um, I didn't think it was something that was ever going to go away. But all that aside, I never really thought about what I would do if it did go away. So there was a period of adjustment for it. Um, and now I'm just uh, excited like I was when I was 14 or 15 about playing music again. I can't wait to get on stage. Um, you know, so, you know, good things can be hidden in tragedies sometimes. You know, something good always comes of it. Uh, but um, that's where I'm at right now. I'm just taking all comers. I'm playing uh, as much as I can. On my nights off, I go jam and practice and write and record. So it's, it's, I'm busy right now. And uh, the Dean Ween group, um, again, in our conversation on the car ride home, it was great conversation I loved it um, especially your uh, impression of the uh, the airline pilot <laughs> talking <laughs> on, the, on the intercom but uh, you said that there's like a couple different Dean Ween groups like they're, they're kind of plastered all over the country like there's a few set like you, there's a, is there a set you well, play out east and the set yeah, up west, so you well, all travel together I want to keep the Dean Ween group very liquid um, you know I did a show uh, a month ago where it was me and Andrew Weiss and Sim Kane from the Rollins band who are old friends Andrew produced all the Ween records for the most part and we just went and jammed for an hour and a half um, I've been jamming with those guys since I was 14 or 15 years old so I want to keep it very liquid like that and unpredictable I don't want people to come out and expect to hear uh, all Ween tunes or all this or all that. I, I, I want to, I want to use this opportunity to challenge myself musically and to do everything that I ever wanted to accomplish as a musician. I want to play with every person that I ever dreamt of playing with. Um, I want to do it in front of people. I want it to be scary and challenging and have those butterflies again. And, and, um, you know, really, just really embrace it. Um, so I do have a, I do have a, a number of lineups I'm playing with. I play with a band in Colorado called Brothers Keeper. Mostly, I play with bands that are already established as a band, so that that dynamic is there. But I'm just the guy out front, and they're playing my music, so it saves the time of having to handpick musicians everywhere. Sure. But these are all people that I've known for a while and I trust musically. Right. And I like them personally, which is just as big as being a good musician. Sure. So you should love and trust the people that are on stage with you and know that they have your back and that you're all going to the same place. So uh, to that end, I play with, uh, I, have an, I have a New Hope, Pennsylvania-based Dean Wing group with Joe Kramer, Guy Heller from the Moist Boys on vocals, Dave Drywitz from Ween, uh, Ray Kubian on drums, and we've done a lot of gigs now together as the Dean Bean Group. And then in Colorado, I have a band based out of Vail called Brothers Keeper. Uh, John Popper's in that band. Sometimes he plays with us, sometimes he doesn't. Um, we've done at least two dozen gigs. Um, I've done a lot of one-off gigs. I've done these shows with the Brownouts, which, you know, I think we're up to, like I said, seven or eight shows now. But I want to keep it liquid, fluid, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't ever want to get too complacent with it and have the same set list, but um, you know it's 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 just a, it's a rewarding time for me, you know, um, creatively, you know, just having that challenge again. That answers a lot of my questions already. <laughs> um, it's all right. I don't like doing interviews. You're doing great, man. <laughs> I haven't done one in a long time. This is going actually. down in, in history. Um, so some of my questions kind of want to like reel in from like the the early the earliest on like so like as a musician like somebody who's trying to or, or you're actively you know hitting this reset button and you're you become sort of reborn as a musician again is sort of what I take like how what originally drew you to like the guitar and music. Well, it, you know, it's funny that you would say that because um, in Ween, people don't realize how undefined the roles were at the beginning of Ween. I was not the guitar player. Um, 
Aaron was not the singer. It was very, very, when we first, I'm talking about when we very first started. I played drums before I played guitar. Awesome. So I played drums on all that stuff. To this day, I played the drums on the final Ween record. You know, Claude Coleman did a little bit uh, over the years, but, you know, I played on all the drums on God, Ween, Satan, most of them on Chocolate and Cheese and the Mollusk, and Claude played, I think he played on all of White Pepper, but Cucaracha, Quebec, I played drums. Um, you know, and and I, over the as the years went by, the roles became more defined because we were touring and we were a popular live band where Aaron became the de facto lead singer and I became the de facto lead guitar player. But that's not really how Ween started and people don't realize that. And what has happened since then is that I've gotten to really embrace my role as a guitarist. Over the years, I got better and better at it, and I became the guitar player in Ween. Even though I was writing songs, even if Aaron was singing them, you know, I wrote half of those songs. Right. Uh, he'd be singing my lyrics, and sometimes I would sing his lyrics. Um, I'd play his guitar parts, he'd play my guitar parts. But this has given me a chance to really focus on the guitar as an instrument and really kind of embrace it and I, if you come see us tonight I mean you've seen us enough times to know that I'm, I am a guitar player now I'm a guitarist <laughs> first and foremost right and I my singing is passable <laughs> I'm, I'm working on that trying to get better at that but uh, you know that uh, I kind of like that actually because I put a lot of work into it and a lot of time practicing and I like guitar music First and foremost, my favorite music in the world is guitar-based music, even if it's Prince or P-Funk, Hendrix, Zeppelin, whatever. These are bands with songs, but, you know, it's all guitar-based music. I like everything, but I'm a huge Santana nut, you know. Um, so I like that. I'm, I'm, I've really... Uh, started the woodshed like I used to when I was a kid. Like I've started practicing a lot more and playing a lot more and taking challenging shows with people, asking me to come play and I don't might not know, be very practiced with it, but taking those chances as a guitarist and I'm loving it actually. I'm really loving it. I, uh, I'm not sure if I remember from like reading this or this was an actual discussion that we had a long time ago, but you were uh, explaining like how you um, got your first Fender and like it was like a, a gift that you it was uh, your parents were gonna give you and it was like underneath your parents' bed or yeah, something yeah it's my red Stratocaster and uh, you had to like go <coughs> like you knew it was there and so when your parents were gone you would go up there and like sneak it out and yeah, just play the it shit out it had scratches all over it by Christmas when I got it yeah <laughs> they put it under their bed in a Fender hard shell case in their bedroom. I just couldn't wait. I, man, I would love to relive those days again. But, uh, yeah, I was so into my guitar. I would sleep with it. Um, I would play all night. And from the time I got up till I went to school or could skip school, the second I got back, I would play that thing every night. But they, yeah, they had it under their bed as a Christmas gift, and I knew where it was. I figured it out because <laughs> I had to help my dad to pick it out. So I knew it was just a matter of time before I bought it. And then I like scoured the house till I found it on the day. I was pretty sure that he bought it. But yeah, it was a red, a red Fender Stratocaster, which I don't, I think I sold it. <laughs> I think I probably sold it like, uh, a, like a year later trying to upgrade to a nicer or an older one or something. But um, yeah, by Christmas day, it had a black pick guard on it and the thing was so scratched from picks I'd played like a hundred hours on it already so did you like plug it in or you just play it <laughs> no right no I just play it that's awesome so uh, the, one of the other questions I have is like so what musicians or bands have drawn uh, inspiration from you mentioned Carlos Santana and there's a question I have or uh, something further down yeah the that's a, everybody always wants to know this but um, it's I, I believe that your influences don't ever change after you're like 16 or 17 you always go through a process of discovery with music you're always yeah. finding new things even things you're into like Bob Dylan or whatever there's he has so many records there's some there's one you never heard or whatever my influences are permanently ingrained uh, it's the Beatles first and foremost I'm a Beatles nut 
I think everybody should be if you're a musician or even a listener. But uh, the Beatles, P Funk, and you know, from a guitar point standpoint, Santana's huge, Prince. Uh, well, I'm sure I said P Funk. I should say it again though. Neil. Uh, but everything. I listen to everything. Have I have you, a massive record collection. Uh, you know. Um, have you ever? There's had just too many things I like to. Yeah, I'd feel like I'm shortchanging somebody if I made a list. I'd leave something out that I right. love. But very, very normal classic tastes. Um, I love Les Paul, actually. He's one of my favorite guitar players ever. Les Paul is known for more for inventing the electric guitar and a signature Gibson model. But as a guitar player, he's one of my absolute favorites. I still listen to a lot of Les Paul trio. Um, uh, just too many things. Have you ever been able to play with one of your like I have uh, I've got a few or... times I've gotten to play with uh, mostly the P-Funk guys I've gotten to play with uh, Bernie Worrell and Michael Hampton and um, guys from Parliament Funkadelic who I love uh, Ween did a song with Isaac Hayes for South Park because he was <laughs> chef on South Park <laughs> I didn't get to be in the same room with him oh, nice. but um, you know I played with Yoko Ono for for a little while. So I wouldn't call her one of my idols, but John certainly was. But, you know, no, I've gotten to meet a lot of people. Um, you posted something on your Facebook or the Ween, uh, Dean Ween Group uh, website about stealing uh, Carlos Santana's guitar. Oh, I, I don't really want to. You should just go look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Child without an eye Made a mother cry Why ask why? She kept the child clean On Buckingham Green The children saw the eye
job without eyes. Made the mother cry. Why ask why? She kept the job clean. On fucking average. I just have uh, a couple questions about wing songs that I'm hoping you can just pacify me with. Okay. Um, Shoot. What is the grobe? I have no idea what that's about. Aaron actually wrote the lyrics to that. And I think sometimes, uh, well, I know for a fact, when we write words, when we, we're writing songs, we have just fun with the language. Words that sound great together. Like John Lennon says, you know, Yellow matter custard dripping from a dead dog's eye. And walrus, goo 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 joob, you know. It's just shit that sounds great together. I think Ween was really was really good at we, we inherited that and and I think the most fun of doing that is writing things that people think are connected. Uh, try and connect like another song to another song by quoting a lyric from it. And uh I'll never give up the truth, but you know, a lot of times I think we're, we were just jiving you. <laughs> People are finding connections between all these songs and album artwork, and you know, I won't tip our hand. And t- <laughs> but uh, is that the same with the Argus? Uh, I'm not. I can't tell you. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. But no. But we would, you know, we would have a lot of fun with the English language. I still do it. Things just certain things flow off the tongue, you know. Um, and just sound rhythmic and beautiful phrases, you know, or most of our songs are written from something you hear somebody say, you know, and it's a really funny, like piss up a rope, you know, it's it's a, it's a funny phrase and the visuals are really hilarious, you know, and, you know, I mean, but that's one out of 8 million examples, you know, just having fun with the language. So the Grove, I'm not really sure what the hell Aaron was writing. I played the instruments on it, but lyrically, I have no idea. I mean, I have I know what the lyrics are. I've sang them. And uh, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me, so I don't know. That satisfies my curiosity. <laughs> um, other question I have is, were you the driving force behind me? And, and I asked that question because I... Well, that's not a really light question. Well, um, and I'm going to ask it because, in like... A lot of the the research that I've done, I've noticed like, I feel like there's this presence, um, like online, like there's this very business acumen type presence, where, um, you know, there's a business behind Ween, but then behind that, like just watching you and Aaron play with like the beatbox, and then like it was just you and him playing like these like live gigs. I felt like you were, the person who was like, making sure all the processes and pieces were coming together. Yeah, I, I'll never give myself that much credit. I was not the driving force behind Ween. I mean, Ween is a partnership of two people, uh, creatively and best friends. But uh, I, I think I was maybe just more accessible to the public than Aaron was. But I don't want to really go any further than that. I mean, without... without uh, me, there would be no ween, and without Aaron, there would be no ween, you know, um, as is obvious now. Um, but no, got it. Okay, <laughs> that's great. I don't cool. want to, that's a good way to end. Yeah, well, thanks for your time again. No that problem, you don't enjoy these things. But, that's all right. Um, our fans and listeners, and your fans and listeners. I'm sure we'll appreciate it. So cool. That's a wrap. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, man. While we got a second, we want to say a big thank you to Shorts Brewery. We love it here. Joe Short, you're the coolest, man. The fucking coolest. Joe, thank you, Joe. To Joe. And every- to Joe. Put him up, everybody. To Joe.
guys want to hear? Huh? All right, that was a stupid idea. Children born to all. Screaming the final alive. 